So, what's today's automotive treat? Is it a Mini? Not exactly. This is a 1980 Wooden Picket Margrave Elite 1380cc. I'll have you know. When the Mini first appeared, it was a classless leveller, a people's car for peasants and royalty and everyone in between. But some of society's elite wanted to be every man, but a bit more. So, there were companies out there ready to cater for that whim. So, people like Peter Sellers and his wicker-sided Hooper, the Beatles, and even Princess Margaret could have a Mini, but just that little bit more special. You know, if you were anyone in society, you didn't just have a Mini, you had a custom coach-built Mini with things like a Landau roof. By the early 70s, one of the originals, Radford, was starting to fall away and they were not far from closing shop. But a new kid in town was Wooden Pickett, London's finest coach builder. Well, their publicity might say so. By the time Wooden Pickett came around in, the, in 1965, they would learned the techniques from the older generation and they were employing the newer technology as well. Although, by the time this was made in 1980, the period of custom minis and coach building was kind of coming end and so this is something of a swan song this car is for sale at stone cold classics so thank you to them for loaning it to us for the review and check out their link in the description below let's take a look around and the first and most obvious thing that people will notice when they look at one of these cars is the front end because it's taken the square club and front a whole new direction we've got twin headlights on both sides obviously there's the smaller five and a quarter inch like on a rover p6 and that kind of thing um but this grill did that look familiar to you it did to me it took me a while to figure out what it was it's a Vauxhall Ventura grille, which has had the middle cut out of it, and uh, this black panel put in between. Um, you can see the uh, join up here and down here, but in the centre, the wooden picket badge, wooden picket of London, hides the join. Crafty, huh? Then you have this bull bar, which isn't as substantial as maybe it looks. It might give you a bit of extra protection in a parking nudge, but uh, it's not going to protect you from any uh, kangaroos or roving bulls. This is one of the few components that wasn't made in-house. It's actually bought this in from outside. Moving back down the car, these wipers might well be standard mini, but in sort of nice stainless steel. But check out these washers, double washers on both sides. I think these are Jaguar items. A lot of Jaguar is in this mini. As you walk down the side of the car, the first thing that might grab you along here is a mini light. Genuine mini lights fitted as standard on a, on a wooden picket. That's a great thing. They're nice wheels. I like them a lot. But that's possibly the least significant item. Many of these cars tended to have a metal arch extension welded into the bodywork. This one is only plastic. Um, it was an option. The customer could choose which one they preferred. And the customer who ordered this car chose to have the plastic extensions screwed on rather than the metal. So wooden picket were coach workers, so they could quite easily graft in a nice new metal panel there to make it all integral but it's up to the customer the customer is always right the next thing you might notice different mirrors guess what they're electric electric mirrors on a mini in 1980 that didn't happen on other minis until well 2001 when the bmw mini came out and that's not all look here we've got a quarter light that's rather nice that's actually from the innocenti the italian version of the mini which had the opening quarter light the british mini didn't get this little luxury here in fact i'd love an innocenti mini that's so cool and behind me back here, check out this flush fitting chrome door handle straight from a Jaguar, complete with a lock and keys from a Jag as well. Very swank. But while we're sat here looking at all these interesting bolt on components, we are missing possibly the biggest thing of all. Check out how smooth this A panel is into the wing. This car's de seamed. De seamed here and de seamed on the rear wing as well. Much smoother looking, much more elegant. There appears to be a lawnmower going past. that might have hit 19 miles an hour yeah check this out it's so much more elegant and uh, when you put your pinstripe on it look flows so much better now around the back of the car obviously we've got the de-seaming we just spoke about we also have twin tanks a la cooper s this is based on a 1275 gt by the way um, but obviously completely rebuilt we no longer have a mini badge or austin or bl or anything like that we have our wooden picket badge in gold this time and we have our margrave badge which appears to have been sort of hand handmade and hand enameled and the thing you're probably looking at and staring at already is that we have a rear wiper again something else which didn't hit regular minis until 2001. now here under the bonnet we have an a-series yet another car on my channel with an a-series but you have not seen one like this before i promise you that this is an avon bar tuned a-series which is bored out to 1380 cc um, has electronic ignition and a uh, nice big K&N filter i'm not sure the actual power output on these things it's not stated anywhere but i can tell you it revs like crazy and it goes like stink and it sounds awesome 
you can still buy this conversion. Avon Bar are obviously still going, and I checked their website earlier. I think it's about three thousand pounds for this particular conversion. Now. As elegant and delightful as the exterior of this car is, the interior is even better. What Wooden Pickett gave you with their interior coachwork and trimming was Rolls-Royce levels of luxury and quality, but in this tiny mini package and all the fun of driving one of these things. So I'm now sitting in a Recaro racing seat trimmed in Connolly leather. And of course that Connolly leather is everywhere. It's on the door cards, it's on the armrest, it's on the steering wheel, and it's on the gear knob and the gear gator. Even this uh, little drop down box for the graphic equalizer is in Connolly leather. The back bench seat and the rear parcel shelf, Connolly leather. The whole thing is just stunning and so opulent. You climb in the car and the waft of this leather, the Wilton carpet, the wood, it just hits you. And if you were blindfolded, you would quite easily think you were getting into a big luxury hand-built car, not a Mini. They've kept some Mini-ish elements here. The Motolita steering wheel is tiny and obviously a Mini, Mini favorite. It's the perfect size for a car this tiny. I'm sure as soon as you saw the interior of this car, you spotted the wooden dash. Minis don't generally come with a wooden dash, but these do. This is their own design. It's unique to them with their, their own bespoke cowl around the top. You still get the mini air vents either side of it so you don't lose your ventilation and you get a glove box here which is uh, not a bad size actually for, for a mini. And then they've used a combination of Jaguar dials which looks like something out of an E-Type or probably an XJ to be honest. Um, the Speedo, the Taco, the fuel and oil and water temperature. To the left of that you have some Smith dials. You've got your temperature gauge, your clock and amp meter, amp meter which sits above a Rolls-Royce style pull out ashtray with a wooden front. And of course the radio is below that. I think this radio may have been upgraded in probably the mid 80s because I'll talk you through what, what it's got in a minute. It's a full pioneer system. It's the kind of thing when I got my first car in the early 90s I'd have killed for. Um, but below the radio then you have this bank of rocker controls, three to either side of the, the central sunroof switch for controlling all, all of the other systems in the car. Headlights, rear screen heater, that kind of stuff. And below that, instead of having your tacky Smith's metal box hanging underneath the dashboard, you've got more leather. Down here you have the choke, the controls for the heater and ventilation, and what looks like a log fire of some kind. Or I think I've seen most controls in the car, but I don't ever remember seeing one with a log fire on it. I know this is a very bespoke English country drawing room of a car, but I haven't actually found the fireplace yet. So if you see a chimney anywhere, point it out in the comments. Now these doors, these doors are worth a mention. Uh, you have a little Jaguar Rolls Royce style door pull here, a little latch for locking it, a la Jaguar. It's this nicely padded armrest. It looks like on a Rover P5 that you can move up and down, but actually you can't, it's fixed in position. But it is very, very comfortable. It's nice just to rest your arms like in a throne almost. One, one arm on the center, one arm on the door, ah, and relax. And to be different from a regular Mini, the door handle is this little plastic tail here. Push away and you're free. This cubby in the middle is really big, it's really handy, you can put a lot of stuff in there. The cars in the 1980s didn't have a lot of storage, so having a big centre box and a glove box is quite the luxury, frankly. And the radio, the radio is cool. You have a, okay, it's kind of early days of a digital screen, so I'm guessing this must be not an original thing. It's got to be mid, probably late 80s, I would say, this is fitted. Philips radio here, and it's wonderful, pioneer, Graphic equaliser. And come on, when graphic equalizers came into cars, that was the greatest thing in the world. They are, of course, completely pointless because everyone sets them into this little pattern here, which is kind of a smiley face with a, your high frequency and your low frequency up, your center frequencies down in a little semicircle, a little grinning face. Why don't you just pre program all sound output to be that and be done with it? Because that's what everyone does. But hey, it's a cool thing to have. In the doors, we have these Pioneer um, coaxial two-way speakers. And on the back shelf, we have the greatest Pioneer speakers ever, the two ways with the raised tweeters. I had this on my Christmas list for every year in the 90s, wanting one of these for mum and dad for Christmas. I never got them. I think they probably sound terrible in comparison to anything new. It would be quite cool in a 90s car now to put a really good modern two-way speaker in the back shelf 
and just put that, that cover off that Pioneer on top of it so it looks like pure 90s style. Now in terms of my ability as a contortionist, this car may have been my match. I think I might have reached my limit. You need to be quite little to get in the back here because these Recaros are so big and so well padded, it's actually very hard to get past them. Um, in the back though, the rear bench is recovered in this beautiful leather. Um, there aren't any seat belts in the rear at the moment, but there are hitch points on the rear shelf so you can put uh, some kind of harness restraint in. There are big bucket bins on either side and you've got little mat pockets on the backs of the front seats along with a little ashtray on the floor. I'm not sure how you'd empty it though because it doesn't appear to move. So uh, anything you put in there may stay there for quite a while. There's a little courtesy light on the side up there and the back of your inertia rear seat belts for the front seat passengers. And that's your lot in the back. Sorry I can't get in, but there is a limit to my ability. Sorry. I think the best thing to do now is take it for a drive. Right, let's open the course of light because it's kind of warm in here. That's quite a nice bit of breeze. Lovely. Keep and crack open the window a tad. These are tinted windows as well. They've got a nice green glass, which is uh, very elegant. to be the most luxurious Mini I've ever driven. At home, as much on a country lane, enjoying a B-Row Blast as it would be on like a King's Road in Chelsea, outside Harrow's picking up a bottle of bubbly for some fancy party with A-list celebs. Because those are the kind of people who bought this car because it was ridiculously expensive back when it was new. Obviously you've got the price of a new Mini, plus all the cost of the coachwork, which was more than the same again. So yeah, pop up, pop up to Harrods or uh, Fortnum and Masons, bottle of bubbly, whatever is in fashion this decade. Bit of bo bottle of bolly. I mean, personally, I'm more of a, a tattinger kind of guy. The thing that really strikes you about this car, I'm going to shut the window, is the power. If you've driven minis before, then you will know. They are fun. They are loads of fun. But they're not always the quickest things in the world, even the 1275 the fastest of the bunch. Feels fast. This really is quick. I mean, the, virtually a 1.4 litre engine in this thing. I'm sure all this uh, moo and timber is gonna weigh you down a tad, but not enough to slow down a, a 1.4 litre. So yeah, it goes. And that little SU carburetor breathing through that K&N, or I don't know if it's K&N or k &N style filter. Oh, that sounds so good. Now the brakes clutch, all that kind of stuff, is very typically mini. Um, at low speeds your steering is weighty as hell because there's no power assistance and it's got those wide mini lights on it as well. As you get up to speed it's a lot lighter and there's just so much feel, it's so direct. You're almost telepathically connected to the car. Might try the sunroof, see how much noise that makes. Not bad actually, yeah, we can live with that. There's a bit of light in the car, a bit of breeze in the car, not too noisy. Excellent. Now I'm told that Wooden Pickett started with automatics and then converted them to a manual uh, because the autos, I think, got bigger brakes. I might be wrong on that. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments if I am. And this does stop really quite well. Very swank. P-plate 1996. 728i, oh that's a pretty car. But I have to say, this is probably the more luxurious of the two. There is just something about being in a hand-built, bespoke car. It's like having a Savile Row suit or you know, custom-made furniture. You can buy something nice from the shops. You can go to a dealer and buy the best they offer. But having something made specifically for you, a one-off, that really is kind of special. That's not something anyone can have. And the price premium on these was ridiculous. Uh, the, the money you were paying for basically a Mini was going to buy you, you know, a Jaguar or something else. But it was a unique, special one-off when you got it. You could have this done any way you like it. Yeah, this car has blue paintwork, dark midnight blue paint. It's not until you get close you realise it's got this amazing little metallic speckle in there. Oh, listen to that. Rorty little car 
Rob Rett a go. It's got a bigger exhaust as well on the back. So as I was saying, this, this car manages to combine the amazing go-kart handling that you would always expect from a Mini. But throw that in, and with a level of refinement, a feeling of weight and gravitas, if you like, that you wouldn't normally expect from one of these cars. It doesn't matter how good or how luxurious a Mini is, at its heart, it's half rally car, half go-kart. You're gonna have fun driving it. Everyone loves a Mini. It is the absolute antithesis of what is ago this wanted from his creation. The small car with no distractions, no fripperies and luxuries. This is not that car at all. So this was a car for someone with money. Maybe a bit of taste, or in certain cases, maybe no taste at all. Um, but somebody wanted to make a statement that they could have the ordinary expensive car. They could have a Rolls Royce. They could have a Jaguar, a Mercedes, a Daimler whatever else you want, an Aston Martin, but no, they spent the money of an Aston Martin on a Mini and they made it absolutely their own. They were people who wanted to make a show, maybe go slightly under the radar, but at the same time, be visible. Not completely invisible, just noticeable enough. If you don't know cars, this just looks like a Mini with different headlights. But if you do know what cars are and you do know about maybe fashion of the time, then you know that you're looking at something extremely special. Now sadly, by the early 80s, the fashion for creating your own car, customizing it, why one-off coach build experience was really dead. And this is kind of the, very much the tail end of the whole experience. Notice it's still got the uh, indicators on the right-hand side on, on a 1980 Mini. And of course, 1980s customization was way less tasteful than this. We're talking jacked up Cortinas and we're venturing into the era of way too much billet on hot rods. So the, uh, the, the, those brief two decades of you know, Connolly Hyde, Wilson leather, hand polished wooden dash had gone the way of the dinosaurs, which is a shame. And now we have these beautiful anachronisms there are quite a few fake wooden pickets around. Wooden rather than wood and, you might say. Because it's easy to go and buy the parts and create one from a, a broken shell or have a, a car trimmer make up a copy of something like this. But cars like this, which has the original bill of sale, the original order form, really are special, really are different. I hope you've enjoyed looking at something really unusual today. If you have, please hit like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And join us again next time for something very different again. One thing I will say is that because you've got this big centre cubby here, it's really hard to get your hand on the uh, seatbelt clip. I nearly forgot to tell you this one final thing. Check out this mirror with turn signals in the glass.